Hey guys, it's going to Jim again and welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to do something a little bit different and walk you through some of the repositories that I got in github.com forward slash Elmer And the reason why I want to do this is because I want you to know that I'm contributing through the community, the open source community, and basically everything that I'm doing in the videos I am making available as source code. So if you want to download some of the examples as you're watching some of my videos and or you might get stuck in one of the videos, go ahead and look at the repositories that I have in github.com because more likely I'm going to have source code with the prototype that I created. If it's a if it's a prototype or if it's you know something that I'm teaching, for the most part I always create a repository. So I'm gonna walk you through some of the repositories that I have so far here, some of the ones that are popular. Some of the ones that you know I've been spending a lot of time. So the one that I've been spending a lot of time, and you're probably familiar with this if you're if you have been watching my AR Foundation Essentials, is this Unity AR Foundation Essential repository. And I have a lot of different examples for you know different prototypes that I'm creating. So let's go ahead and go into that. And I can show you some of the examples that I have. So I, I've been doing, you know, prototypes on face tracking. So for the most part on every repository, I'm going to have a title and then a description and then also a link to the playlist. So if you're looking at one of these examples and you want to know, you know, what video am I teaching that example on, then more likely you're going to have a link. I didn't do this on, uh, on the early, on the earlier prototypes, on the earlier repos that I created. But I started doing this about six months ago. So I've been trying to keep this format and then basically give you a thumbnail for each one of the, the prototypes that I do. So I did one on face tracking. I did there's one on people occlusion. I wanted to see if I could occlude a person in my in, in this case is my hand by applying a texture. So that I have an example of that. This is another variation where I apply a different texture. And instead of looking at a green screen, I'm now looking at my computer. I also did one because I, I had the idea of, of having, you know, a person on fire or, or creating something that would resemble superpowers. So I decided to do one, you know, body tracking with fire particles. This one, I just basically have particles. And these are the legacy particles. And I call them legacy because I'm not using visual effects graph. And what I do is I have a particle effect on my head, some of my leg and the other leg, and then also my, my arms. So the other thing that I did is I wanted to test and see if I could play around with the body tracking by, by using a rubber. And this came from an example that Unity has, it's called AR Foundation Essentials. And I looked at how they implemented it and then I used the rubber that they had. So a lot of credits goes on a lot of these to Unity because they've been providing a lot of examples in the repository as well. So here's a different example I wanted to try. Instead of using, you know, this robot, I wanted to try cubes, especially because I like a lot to use, you know, voxels and, and things that are minimalistic. So I wanted to see if I could attach cubes to a skeleton. So here's another example of that. This one is when, when I started just the body, I didn't include the, the arms. So on this one, I did the arms as well. So you can see the rotation works, my arms are moving, also the cubes are moving. I, I wanted to do something where I could record poses and and also, so if you want to, to animate this figure without me being there, I could do that. I haven't finished that video yet, but I'm going to be doing that in the future. So you'll see another example about that. Then, you know, I also jump into image tracking. I really enjoy working on image tracking. So I grabbed the video that I have right here. And I started to see if I could actually play a video on, on the image that was getting tracked. And I was able to do that. It works really well. You can see that I, I wanted to do different cards. So I have different image targets. So on one, I have the Sam's Club card. On the other one, I have the, the library card, as you can see. Then I had a question about, well, that's cool. I could do, you know, I could do one video and the same video, the same, the same prefab. But what if I wanted to do multiple prefabs? What if I wanted to do different ones on different, you know, on different targets? So this one is a blue sphere and, and then I do a green sphere. So this one is an example of how we can use, you know, one prefab per image. 
Uh, and there's a lot of use cases for that. In my case, I just wanted to, you know, apply, improve, improve the theory, the, the tech that I was able to do that. And I was able to do that. And then I also wanted to try, I saw an app in the app store that was uh, augmented reality measuring tape. So I decided to do it in AR Foundation and I proved that, it's, you know, that it was possible and it's actually pretty easy to do. So here's another scene about that. Then I went outside and I wanted to do object selection, so doing Raycast. So here's an example of Raycast. I also did one example where I was basically placing TVs on the walls because wouldn't it be cool that you have, you know, these modular TVs that you can place anywhere, anywhere in your augmented world. So that's that example. And here's an example of a basic AR basic inventory. All it is is basically a selection. So if I select red, it's going to apply the red prefab on the target, which is going to be a plane. I'm using plane detection here, um, or horizontally and also vertically. So in this example, I have a, a realistic statue. I wanted to see how real that would look like if I would apply that in augmented reality. So that's that example. So the next one is an AR realistic statue with bounding area selection. So I wanted to do different. So I just basically have a lot of different examples in here. One where I'm applying rotation. This one I'm changing the scale. And this one I'm doing eye tracking. And I'm going to have a lot more examples, guys. So this is just that repository. And like I said, this is the entire project. Here's the playlist. You can also do the playlist here. And then you can clone it, download it with, you know, either source tree or you can just use Git, purely Git. So let me go back to my profile. So that's that repository. Then I started experimenting with VFX. And you guys, if you follow me in Twitter or in, you know, in other areas, you know how much I love VFX. So I started to play around with visual effects graph and seeing the power of, of it. So this is just basically a, a playlist of, and also the, the examples of the effects that I created. And if you go into it, into the actual playlist, you can see that I have you know, a, lot of, a lot of different examples for each one of the effects. This one is basically getting set up and getting started. The, these are just some, some tips and tricks for creating comments and stars. This one creating fire, creating portals, more portals. And then I started working into a leg like space. So who doesn't, right? So then I did one where I was doing meteors. Then I did do a test on using the lightweight rendering pipeline, which is now called Universal with VFX Graph. Then, you know, I started going and adding a lot more examples as you can see, as you can see in here. And then here's one of my most recent ones. These three are in a different repo, and I'm going to show you where those are. And then these ones right here are for a game, uh, an app that I'm creating. But for the most part, you'll have you know example of the meteors that I that I show you, the portals, and this one. Unfortunately, I don't have thumbnails because I wasn't doing that back then. But I I do on the new ones. Then I also have a Unity REST client if you want to if you guys want to use it for calling you know making calls over HTTP. I started experiment, experimenting with the Azure Vision API. And there's some examples in here, how you can do a get, how you can do a post, and then how to call the Azure Vision API. But this works with you know, any type of API. And like I said in here, you can do a get, a post, a put, and a delete. And I also play around with procedural generation. This one is just another example of using Unity ARKit. This is specifically not with AR Foundation. This is with the AR key package that Unity had before. I'm going to be migrating this into AR Foundation at some point. I just haven't had the time. But just you can you can look at it for as a reference because it, it actually is really cool. You can set up an expression and let's say that you want you know you want to detect when somebody's smiling or even when they have a micro expression where it's just a small gesture on your face, you can use this to set that up. And like I said, I'm going to be migrating into AR Foundation, so you guys have that example as well. And then I also did do Unity LWRP Essentials. That moved to Universal, so that's going to be changing to Universal. And I'm going to do new examples of that as well. And I, yeah, this was one of my beginnings of creating repos, so I don't have a lot of thumbnails. But you can clone that repo as well. And then Unity Procedural Generation, I wanted to play around with you know, creating cubes, creating, creating different, 
different type of primitive shapes that I could dynamically place in random locations. So if I go into the playlist, you'll see what I'm talking about. I start with creating quads and meshes, creating cubes, and then applying normals, ran randomization. Then I try to do a city, and which I still need to go back and add more to it. And then here's adding manual versus procedural material options. So I'm adding options on materials dynamically, meaning that I'm applying those to code. And then using scriptable objects to create basically the setup, the menu for generating the grid, gizmos, and then et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So different examples in this repository. And then the one that I want to show you today, I have a lot more, and you can look at all the 42 repositories if you want to. But these are some of the main ones. And then the one that I wanted to talk about as well was the Unity VFX Millions of Particles. So this is one that I created recently because I wanted to test you know, the new version of Unity, which is 2018.3.0 beta. And they're still in beta, but I've been playing with visual effects craft and I've been running tons of particles. So some examples have 2 million particles, some examples have 5 million, some of them have 9 million. So that, and when I say the, how many particles, I'm talking about the capacity, the max capacity that I'm setting in the graph. So a few examples for the sun, also a few examples for the fire that I created, which got a lot of attention in social media. And I really appreciate everybody that, you know, that, that told me they like this, which is the reason why I created this repo, because I wanted you guys to look at it as well. Then I, I had the question about, okay, if I have millions of particles, can I collide with them? And how fast would that respond? And then you can see how that works. And then I started working into, you know, animating particles, meaning that I'm moving them around and applying different physics. So I, like I said, I'm going to have a lot of different prototypes and all my code is going to be open source. So if you guys want to download it, download it for free. There's really no commitment whatsoever. This is all open source. One thing that I would ask you, if you if you wouldn't mind supporting me in Patreon, that would be amazing because it really will help me in creating more things like this, more repositories, and you know, and keep helping the community with you know with code that they can use in their own projects. So that's everything that I have for today, guys. If you guys have any questions, let me know, and make sure that you look me up in Patreon, like I said before, but also find you know gamedev.net because they have really great resources for game developers there's a lot of things about graphics programming in their website a lot of great forums that you guys can check out so like i said if you have any questions please let me know thank you